everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander, where we do our best to keep our games of Commander fun without sacrificing our ability to win. We're just a group of friends trying to have fun by playing our favorite game. If you're looking for expert plays and optimized deck lists, you're not going to find them here. I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. Kyle won the dice roll. He's playing Will Helt, the Rock Cleaver, a zombie tribal deck that's looking to overwhelm the opponents by having all sorts of zombies. Uh, he kept a six-card hand with two swamps, Liliana Death's Majesty, Sadisi Undead Vizier, Demonic Tutor, Arcane Signet, and he had to put a swamp to the bottom of his library. Next in the turn order is me, BK. I'm playing Strafan, Marer Progenitor. So I'm looking to make a bunch of blood tokens and then use them to cheat out big threatening vampires for my hand. And I kept a 7 card hand with Fabled Passage, Mountain, Swamp, Bloodline Necromancer, Vanquisher's Banner, Ancient Craving, and Arcane Signet. And third in the turn order is J-Man. He's using Tovalor, Dire Overlord as his commander. It's a gruel colored deck that wants all the werewolves to beat down opponents. He kept a 7 card hand with Mossfire Valley, 2 Forests, 3 Visits, Mayor of Averbrook, Sylvan Library, and Thrill of Possibility. And last but not least, we have Busterkins, who's trying out Millicent, Restless Revenant, a spirit tribal commander who wants to have all of the spirits possible uh, with a sub-theme of flying as well to keep them evasive and beating down the opponents. He kept a seven-card hand with Port Town, Two Plains, Island, Drogskull Captain, Empyrean Eagle, and a Rattle Chains. Our seats are chosen at random, and it turned out like this. We hope you enjoy the game, and let us know what you think in the comments. Kyle will kick us off by playing Watery Grave. He lets it enter the battlefield tapped, and passes. Fabled Passage hits BK's board, immediately crack that to find a swamp, passing it to J-Man, who plays a forest. He passes to Busterkins. He plays Port Town, and reveals an island from his hand. This allows him to play Mausoleum Wanderer, a spirit that can get a little bit bigger or possibly counter something. Swamp hits the battlefield for Kyle on turn two, then an Arcane Signet. He passes to BK, I draw for turn, and then I play a Mountain as my land for turn, and then I copy Kyle by playing an Arcane Signet. Over to J-Man, for his second turn, he drops another Forest, and then he casts Sylvan Library, allowing him to draw a few more cards at the expense of some life. On to Busterkin's turn, he plays Plains as his land and suspiciously passes. Will Help, the Rock Cleaver, makes an appearance on Kyle's board on his turn 3, and with that he passes over to BK. I play a Blood Crypt, and I pay the 2 life to have it untap. Then I cast my commander, Strafan Mara Progenitor. On my end step, he'll trigger because I lost life this turn, so I get a blood token. And with that, it moves to J-Man. He has a replacement effect on his draw step, so he draws three cards, and then chooses to put two back, and won't lose any life. Moss Fire Valley is his land for turn. Then he plays the Celestis, allowing him to not only use it as a mana rock, but he can manipulate day and night as well. Rattle Chains is flashed in by Busterkins on J-Man's end step. This will pump up Mausoleum Wanderer, but doesn't really matter here. Island is played, and then he casts Strog Skull Captain, which is a spirit lord, giving plus one plus one and hexproof to all of his spirits. He goes to combat, dealing three damage to Kyle and J-Man, then passes. Unclaimed Territory, naming Zombie, is played by Kyle. Then Sadisi Undead Vizier hits the battlefield. Its exploit ability goes on the stack, and he chooses to sacrifice it to itself. This will trigger Wilhelt, giving him a 2-2 Decayed Zombie, and he could also tutor up a thing with Sadisi's ability. On to BK's turn, a Swamp enters the battlefield, then I go to combat with Strafan right at J-Man. He takes the three, then I cast Ancient Craving, drawing three cards and losing three life. And with that, I've had two players who have lost life this turn, move to end step, which triggers and gives me two more blood tokens. On to J-Man's turn, again he draws three, this time he puts back one and takes four life. Forest is J-Man's land for turn, then he follows that up by casting his commander, Tovalor, Dire Overlord. Following that, he plays Lightning Greaves, and then he moves to equip his commander with said boots. And now that his commander is super fast, he can attack, choosing Busterkins as his target, who takes the damage, allowing J-Man to draw a card. Busterkins plays Prairie Stream as his land for turn, which comes in untapped. He then plays Empyrean Eagle, giving all of his creatures plus one plus one, so long as they're flying, which pretty much they all are. This also pumps Mausoleum Wander before he swings, dealing damage to Kyle and BK. Island is Kyle's land for turn on turn five. He then casts Dictate of Erebos, because he's a Generate human being. He then moves to end step, triggering Will Helt, sacrificing his token, triggering Dictate, so all of our things start to die. Of note, I put my commander into the graveyard. Onto my turn, I play Unclaimed Territory, naming Vampire. Then I cast Bloodline Necromancer. When this ETBs, I could return a vampire or wizard from my graveyard to the battlefield. In this case, I choose my commander, Strafan, and he returns to the battlefield, but he is no longer able to attack. So I pass the turn. J-Man draws three instead of one, and then he puts two back. 
Then he casts three visits. This will have him find a forest card, and then he'll be able to shuffle his library. Stomping Ground is the forest card that he chose. He'll have it enter untapped by paying two life. Then Toski, Bearer of Secrets, hits the battlefield. He's a squirrel, not a wolf, but he draws J-Man tons of cards most of the time. He attempts combat to Busterkins, but Busterkins blocks with his Empyrean Eagle. Plains hits the battlefield on Busterkins' board. Then he casts Millicent, his commander. Uh, its cost is reduced because he has three other spirits. After that, he goes to combat, and he deals all the damage to Kyle. This will trigger his commander as well after combat, giving him three more spirit tokens. On to Kyle, and starting turn six, Liliana Death's Majesty is cast. And with that, Kyle activates her minus three ability, this will allow her to return Sadisi Undead Vizier to the battlefield. Its exploit ability is triggered on itself again. So he gets a zombie token, all the opponents sacrifice a creature, and he gets to tutor a thing up with Sadisi. He moves to end step, triggering Wilhelt, sacrificing his token, which triggers Dictate again, and gives him a card. And with that, uh, on Kyle's end step, BK sacrifices a blood token, discarding a card, and then drawing a card, and remembering to put my commander back in the command zone. I draw a card for turn, I play Myriad Landscape, which enters tapped, which was super unfortunate, and then Swift Foot Boots enters my battlefield, and with that I have nothing else, so I have to pass the turn. Over to J-Man, again, uh, Sylvan Library has him draw three, this time he puts one back, taking four life. Castle Garenbrig enters the battlefield on his board, followed by an unnatural growth making it so all of his creatures on combats are much, much bigger. Busterkin's turn, he plays a Plains, and then he casts Winged Words, which cost is reduced because he has creatures with flying, so he'll draw two cards, and then he moves to combat, dealing damage to Liliana as well, which will end up killing her. He then has four spirit tokens generated by his commander's triggered ability. He follows all that up by casting Sky Diamond, enters the battlefield tapped, and then over to Kyle's turn. He draws, plays Drowned Catacomb as his land. He follows that up by casting Demonic Tutor, hoping to find an answer to Busterkin's overwhelming board state, I assume. And my assumption is correct. He casts Meat Hook Massacre, where X equals 3. However, Busterkin's has a very timely Mana Drain, so this will counter the Meat Hook Massacre, and in addition, give Busterkin's 5 more mana on his first main phase. Strafan hits the battlefield yet again on my side of the board after Kyle's turn. I equip my boots, I move to combat at Kyle because he's the best target, and then the triggered ability of Strafan hits and allows me to drop Patron of the Vein, putting it onto the battlefield and targeting a creature to destroy it. In this case I choose Drug Skull Captain, which exiles it, giving plus one plus one counters on my creatures, and I drop Kyle down to 5 life. At the end of that turn, I trigger, making a blood token, and J-Man decides to, on my end step, cast Thrill of Possibility, drawing a couple of cards, because he hasn't drawn enough cards yet. Then it moves to J-Man's turn, so he'll draw three cards, and his draw step, he puts two of them back. Then he casts Defense of the Heart, hoping to be able to tutor up a couple of creatures, given that Busterkins has so many creatures. Duskwatch Recruiter hits the battlefield alongside Mayor of Ava Brook. Two werewolves that J-Man would love to flip over for their reverse side effects. He then equips his boots to protect his mayor, and we go to Busterkin's turn. He has five additional mana on his first main phase. He casts Mirror Entity, and immediately activates it using a total of nine manas which makes all of his creatures with base power and toughness 9-9, nine, nine, plus all the bonus effects that he has with his creatures, dealing 10, 30, and 40 damage to his opponents. This knocks all three of us out of the game at the same time. Congratulations, Busterkins. Well done. That was a cool victory, Busterkins. I'll get you next time. So what did y'all think of that game? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you very much for watching.